We as humans have a great ability to understand information at a level that really makes sense to us and other humans. We can look at a stack of paper, start to read through it, figure out relationships between documents, between text, and really understand these implicit relationships. Not relationships that are directly correlated or based on statistics and probability, but relationships that are based on our own experiences, our own mental models and the way that we perceive the world and the information around us. A lot of us have been in a situation like this, whether it's your digital inbox full of emails from returning from a trip on a vacation, um, getting back to the office and seeing a big pile of paper, and then organizing it somehow, laying it out in a way where you begin to understand and project your mental model onto some sort of canvas or onto some sort of space around you. There's an inherent flexibility in this because while you can organize and lay out your information in this space, you don't have to tell anything or anyone or any system why. You simply place it near each other because to you that is where it makes sense. To you that's where that information relative to the other information really occupies meaning in its absolute physical location. You can access that information directly by glancing over, by grabbing it, moving it near other information, even by using things like a pencil or a highlighter and actually teasing out more abstract pieces of information from that, uh, from that actual text document and narrowing down on what it is that you're focusing on. It is essentially your ability to offload and externalize what your mental model is based on the information that you're presented into some sort of space. This space makes a lot of meaning to you because essentially you're the one who created it. Therefore, it is an extension of your memory or an externalization thereof into some sort of surrounding area where that relationship between those pieces of information hold true given your domain expertise or your experiences. Well, how about when we start to increase the amount of information? Uh, whether it's a week-long vacation and you come back and your inbox has tens, hundreds, or maybe even thousands of new messages. How are you, what do you do when you are overwhelmed with this amount of information? Now, in the physical sense, this might seem a little ridiculous, but in the digital age, where there's information all around us, whether it's Twitter, emails, news groups, news websites, we're essentially bombarded with information and lacking knowledge. There's a field called visual analytics that tries to attack this exact challenge, essentially by saying we as humans have intuition that systems do not, we have complex computational advancements in fields such as data mining, statistics, probability, information retrieval, and we have this wonderful ability to visualize information in that same type of space where users have created it. So similar to how you might lay out documents on a big conference table, we can computationally attempt to generate a similar type of view. One where every dot here is actually a text file from a big news feed, and then the relative distances between them indicate some type of similarity. You can abstract that out one level and then see these themes. So you see that down here, you might have a little more of a government polit pol political uh, theme. And then up here in the middle, you might have more about animals and wildlife and then NASA and space and golf and other types of things, all in order to try to mimic that same type of space that we as humans can manually create. Except the fact that this is done in seconds where several thousand news feeds might take a human a very long time to do, depending on how fast you read. Now, where it gets more complicated is that while leveraging and exploiting all this complex mathematics, what has happened is that we create tools similar to this one where users can then begin to explore the space. And what I mean by that is you essentially have this beautiful representation that we can create where users can gain information from it based on whatever computational structure these, these algorithms have extracted out of the information. And then what we've done is we've placed toolbars and rather all sorts of types of user interfaces off to the side where users can begin to bias or control the space a little bit. So by saying that in this example, you know, I'm really not interested in all of the political documents. I'm more so interested in a lot of the things going on with, with wildlife and animals. Well, then I can go over here and I can start to steer or adjust these models and ask for another representation that more closely reflects my focus or what it is that I'm interested in. However, that essentially requires you to put aside your expertise in the data or of the data and leverage expertise you may not have, and myself included in that, of these complex models. So you're essentially being required to go outside of your area of expertise which is whatever data it is that you're looking at, and into an area of expertise 
where only a few are truly experts. Dimension reduction models, information retrieval, data mining, uh, connecting the dots, graph theory, all these types of things that are essentially able to crunch all these numbers and give you these views, but may not be the most intuitive for a user who's an expert in history or just a casual reader of news groups to try to understand. Whatever happened to this space that is directly manipulable? manipulable? Um, you can essentially go in and touch it and, and directly interact with it in the canvas in which it is created meaning in the space, on the floor, on a conference table, or whatever this visual spatial paradigm is that we can create. So with semantic interaction, let's take a look at how we've changed that. You can see, first of all, there's no user interface off to the side. There's no direct control of the mathematical underpinnings that create this space. Instead, we are asking the user to just interact and begin to organize, and we have placed the statistics and data mining in a role where it simply listens to the user and tries to understand what those informal relationships are. So by placing two documents closer together, there is some sort of implied similarity. And let's try to leverage all that computational power as a way to understand or try to mine for that understanding and then amplify it across the entire data set. To whereas the user can focus on intuitive relationships between a subset of the actual data and essentially amplify that out into the greater data set. What this does is it essentially creates this idea that you are co-learning from each other. The system is listening to the user and trying very hard to understand why certain relationships and certain responsibilities between information is created, amplify that onto the, out onto the rest of the data set, and then learn again from the user based on what has happened. So some of these areas and, and clusters and groups were created based on what the user has done, and others are created based on what the system has interpreted from the user and then amplified to the rest of the data set. So when we think about how that fundamentally changes the way that we approach this, I, this complex idea of knowing, uh, it essentially says, traditionally, with these tools, with these direct, manipulation, direct controls over uh, complex parameters, we ask questions like this. Should I use the first or third eigenvalue of my T PCA decomposition? Raise your hand if you know what that means. All right, so there's maybe two or three. Um, now, how about something like this? This email from my mom is similar to that one from my dad. Who here can probably figure that one out? OK, so essentially what we're saying here is we're changing the emphasis back onto the user and their domain and what they actually know and what they understand. We're placing the user back in that critical role within the science of visual analytics that is essentially to leverage their intuition and their ability to create informal relationships as opposed to specify explicit and formal relationships which would not really leverage the user's mental model or their understanding of the world or things that cannot be computationally generated. If we take a look at what this means in terms of just the flow of knowing or gaining understanding, it really changes from one where the user has to think through math. So I can't say these emails are similar. These are all the ones from Amazon, so I want you to infer that this is about shopping and maybe bring over the other ones from eBay as well. Instead, I have to think through the math. I have to say, you know what, I need to weight these six dimensions a little bit higher and place a certain spatial constraint onto my decomposition algorithm that places them in this particular region. And then hit the regenerate button and simply hope that the system has understood my implicit relationship that I'm trying to mine for or I'm trying to understand. Instead, with semantic interaction, we shift it around and we say this is actually a medium for interaction and communication between a user and a system. A spatial metaphor is one where both can understand and both can communicate through. To a user, it is simple to understand that two documents close to each other are similar. Therefore, if I disagree with how that has been mined, I simply move them apart. I can highlight directly within the text. I can search. I can do all of the things that I'm currently doing as part of my analytic workflow within this one environment. And then the math is placed in the background and saying that, let me help the user with the quantity of data. Given a small set of data, five, 10 documents, I'm sure, we shouldn't, I'm sure we won't need this. We can simply lay it out on our desk and go, I've got a pretty good understanding of what's going on here. But when you say 10,000, 10 million, 100 million, it doesn't become very feasible for a user to understand that by themselves. So with that, I really urge you all, uh, whether you are on the user side, understanding that second question that I said, or on the researcher side, where you're working on those complex statistical parameters from the beginning, to think about 
how we can advance this field onto one where the power is placed back onto the user, where we begin to shift that, that understanding back into the minds of the user, where we can go from having this overwhelming amount of data, yet a lack of knowledge, to one where we can take our knowledge and try to amplify it in order to understand all of the data that is around us. Thank you.